Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you Monday Minutes. Let me tell you, the innovations this year in the holiday lighting hobby uh, are unmatched. I think it's a remarkable year, 2023, for the entire community, for light show enthusiasts. And uh, as a sequencer, as a vendor, as a business owner, it's important that I keep up with a lot of information. As much as that, of, of this information that I impart to you with just X lights, there's so much more of it, so much more of it. New lights, new controllers, new this, new that. It's hard to keep up. Everybody is on this innovation kick. And I don't know, are we just bored? Is everything we've done for the last eight years not good enough? I don't know if I agree with that, but innovation is never bad if it serves the purpose for the masses. And that would be all of you and me included. And some of the things I always look out for are things that are innovative that help with uh, safety. You know, things that make it easier for you to do things on your roof, on your house, on your windows, anytime you're up on a lift, hopefully, or a ladder. But there are other things that I'm seeing come down the pike that are very, very interesting that as a sequencer, I have to keep up with. And for about the last month, I've been playing around with um, artificial intelligence. We just call it AI. And one of the things that has really jumped out is the possibility of using content, images, videos, you name it, to help further express the artistic value of a sequence. And here's the beauty. Others are gonna catch on to this and they're gonna have to learn how to do this stuff. They're going to have to learn how to sequence better. They're going to have to learn how to use better artwork. And it's not just for the sake of using better artwork. Of course, we always want to elevate our sequences. At least, I know some of us do. Um, is that copyright is sort of a very scary thing for businesses. It can be scary for you if you run a commercial uh, project, whether it's for raising money for Toys for Tots or something like a drive-through. Copyright is always an issue, specifically music. You know, you have to get permission, you have to pay money. But what about all the artwork? What about the images and the videos that you can use in X Lights and then someone uses it in their show and some artist is driving by like, hey man, that is my Santa that I created. I drew that and someone's making money off my stuff. Well, you better lawyer up, potentially right? So it's important to have good insurance as a vendor, but also you have to pay attention to copyright. And then AI came about. And copyright is a completely different discussion with AI. Um, from everything that I'm reading, and I haven't spoken to attorneys about this, that if it is AI generated, there is no copyright on it. Now, I want to be careful how I say this. You have to do your own diligence on this. Do your due diligence to make sure that you are covered because it probably is not unheard of for you to generate something in AI that might be in the likeness of someone else and maybe there is intellectual property. I am not giving advice on what is and is not copyright free, okay? So do be careful with everything I'm gonna be talking about. But here's the biggest thing. AI is going to change the way we use X lights today, moving forward forever. And uh, I've been playing around with quite a bit of this and it's very, very interesting. Do I use it? Yeah, of course. I, I don't wanna be left behind. I need to understand this. Uh, is it cheating? Well, that's up to you to decide. Um, if you're using AI to help you with your business, like everyone else in the world, then I don't know. Will it make us lazy? Probably. Uh, will we be able to uh, invoke less critical thinking? Probably. But, but, even though AI is generating a lot of things for us, we still have to give it the correct prompts. We have to ask the questions in ways that it gives us the best detail that we're looking for the best return. And that's not always easy. There's a lot, lot to it. And I have buried myself in YouTube videos trying to learn this. And I have a buddy down the street that does some projection mapping with visuals that I've never seen before that is just 
out of this world and he uses AI to generate all of it. So he doesn't have to worry about copyright. At least that's what he says, right? So let's talk about how AI will apply to us as holiday lighting enthusiasts with X lights and perhaps any other software used to create light shows. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. And this is not just for the vendors. Don't think that this is just for the vendors. And yes, all the vendors will all be on that tree perched down like mine, mine. Ooh, look what that is. Yeah, we're all going to do it. Everyone's going to do it. Everyone's going to just start throwing images and videos and stuff all over their sequences. Just wait. If you thought whole house sequences was like a big deal, wait till you start seeing images all over the matrices. You know, I've been doing this for years and been using incorporating images and videos and it's been very expensive for me to be able to include with the sequences this may help with that but like learning anything new you have to move slowly and make sure you fully understand it but let's talk about some of the basics of what you can use uh, from AI that might help you with your sequencing and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a few interesting things Yes, I know people have said well when's uh, X lights gonna use AI to build sequences Maybe sooner than you think when I show you something here in a minute You're probably gonna go what and it's uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting <laughs> Uh, at some point we will see AI probably uh, move into the uh, X lights ecosystem for various things, but I'll show you how I use it. And not just for marketing things. Yes, it's great for marketing. Hey, write me a YouTube description about how great this sequence is, blah, 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 blah. And then it goes over there and does all the stuff that you would never have thought of yourself creatively, creatively uh, to express because, well, I don't know, you're not creative suddenly with words? I don't know, I digress. But look at these colors here. I just, on the screen, you just see these colors. All these colors here, uh, were generated from some prompts in chat GPT-4. Yes, I'm paying for that. I just signed up for that recently. And these colors were based on a prompt for a sequence I'm working on. And I gave it some specific things about it to generate the colors based on my request and based on the song. And it's pretty interesting what it does. And so I'm going to bring this up. There we go. And let's go over here to, oh, there we go. There we go. We'll get into the fun images and video stuff in just a bit. But uh, for instance, for All I Want for Christmas by Maya, Mariah Carey, I had asked for ChatGPT to give me color palette in hex values to use in X-Lights for effects using the song All I Want for Christmas is you by Mariah Carey that brings the perfect mood for Christmas song. Boom. And then it says, great, all I want for Christmas uh, is a festive song filled with love, warmth, and holiday cheer to creative effects and X lights that match the mood of this beloved Christmas classic. You can consider using the following palettes. And then it gives me 10. Now, if I asked for 20 uh, colors, it would have given me 20. If I asked for 50, it would give me 50. But I only, I don't, I don't need 50 colors. But I could take these hex values here, like this warm firelight. I can go in here, copy this, go back to my Exolites, and I can go, let's go to a different uh, palette here. Let's just go down to this. And I'm gonna double click on this, and I can double click in here, paste that value, hit enter. Here's my color. That's my warm firelight. Put that in here close out of it and now I have warm firelight that I can choose for this color and there oh no I don't want to go back in there don't click don't click there we go so there we go so, so there's my warm firelight color so this is something you can do and everybody can do and all the vendors can do uh, is to help better uh, create color palettes Okay, another one that I chose, uh, and I was very curious to see how close this would be when I did This is Christmas Nightmare Before Halloween. I had researched specifically to find color palettes that would match what Tim Burton used. So again, I said, you know, find me the colors for Halloween night be Nightmare Before Christmas that brings a perfect mood for this Halloween song. Use palettes from the original movie. 
And here you go. Unique colors, movie inspiration from Tim Burton's distinctive color palette and the visual style of the film. Here are hex values. And here's the blood red, monster green, the witch purple, skeleton bone. And it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, as many of you may know, I am partially colorblind. And as a sequencer, getting all the help I can to express the colors that I want, I know what I like when I see it, but the identification of such can be a challenge for me. So this has been fairly helpful. Okay, so that's colors. Now, I was playing earlier uh, with preset effects, and I was curious what ChatGPT might say about preset effects. And so I told it to create an effect for me of a pinwheel on a 100 by 500 pixel matrix. Okay, so it walks you through the process of how to do this. So this could be a training aid for those that have no idea how to create an effect. Uh, this will give you the steps and you can follow these steps and go to it. And at the same time, it gave me XML code that I could use to create a preset. Now, I'm on a Mac and trying to find the right editor. You know, I'll find it later. On Windows, I would use uh, Notepad++. Uh, Notepad++ and probably be able to do it, but it's not as simple as just dropping the code in and it works. But I think this is something we may see somewhere down the line to where we can create interesting things. How granular? I don't know. The system has to be trained. And the more people training it, the more results you can get. Do I think we're close to uh, AI building a complete sequence for you? No, not yet. But how soon? I don't know. Depends on how uh, fast people are wanting to wanting it to and want to train it. So there you go. That's uh, ChatGPT and how you can use it for all sorts of interesting things. Um, let's get out of that. Let's talk about images. Uh, there are a lot of AI generation, text to image generation, text to video generation applications out there. Uh, one of them that's very well known is Midjourney, and of course there's Stable Diffusion. And I started with Stable Diffusion, and the only reason I have signed up for Midjourney and ClipDrop is I want to compare the results between the three. Uh, Stable Diffusion is an application that you have to install. I will not be teaching you how to do that. You will have to walk on the coals, my friends. There is a lot of video content you're going to need to watch on YouTube and follow the instructions. It doesn't take a day. It takes days to get it sorted and figured out. And uh, uh, on the Windows side, I don't know. Watch videos, learn, install. But the web-based apps like Midjourney, uh, basically you sign up for Discord and you watch a video. And next thing you know, you're learning how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, the challenge with uh, Midjourney is uh, you don't always know what you're going to get and you're going to have to pay for it. Okay, so there is a cost for that. Uh, I'm a firm believer uh, artwork should be paid for if it's coming from an artist, just like music. Uh, if it's AI generated, again, uh, do your due diligence and make sure that uh, you feel comfortable that you're not infringing on copyright. So stable, not stable diffusion, but Midjourney, there happens to be an app that I was able to put onto my computer, which is a lot easier because as soon as you start generating things over here, this thing can start moving down the list. And uh, this seems to be a little bit easier on the eyes to see what's going on. I created a prompt that says, Jolly Santa Claus putting Christmas gifts under the tree in a lovely decorated living room with fireplace. There we go. And this generated four images for me. And you can click on each, you can click on whichever ones you like. You can open in the browser. And these look pretty cool. They're not bad. Uh, the question is, let me open in browser. You have to be careful with the eyes. Look at the eyes on this one. His eyes a little funky here. Uh, this one looks really good. This one looks really good. And I could use these. These could be images in an upcoming sequence. You know, pretty cool stuff, right? All right, so that 
was that. Let's get back into this. This is stable diffusion clip drop, and I've signed up for this. The other thing that's kind of nice about this is you can tell it the aspect ratios, you can put in negative prompts. So if you were putting in a scene with animals at a park, but you didn't want humans, you could type human in the negative prompt, but there'd be no humans. Uh, styles, anime, photographic, all these things. So this sort of does some of the legwork for you, but you know, you're gonna get mixed results no matter what. But it's sort of fun and it's sort of addictive. So uh, while this could be advantageous for sequencers, uh, you're gonna go down rabbit holes you never thought you would go down before and waiting and waiting for it to resolve with something new. You know, um, that's just the way it is. If I wanted to make this same Santa Claus and I wanted to do it in the form of uh, fantasy art, I could click on that and then click on generate and this will go through the process and generate four more images for me to choose from. And, oh, that's really cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. See, this is, this is gorgeous stuff. I mean, it just really is. The colors are just so vibrant. It's great, 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 great. I just, you know, you, you just have to love it. Okay, so... This was the stable, uh, I'm sorry, this is the mid-journey, this is clip, drop, and then what I started with, the most difficult one to get installed. This is stable diffusion. And if it would be analogous to learning to ride a bicycle and then moving to the space shuttle cockpit. That's what this feels like. Because there is so, so much to this uh, but I think the results here are amazing it's absolutely free it's open source uh, this runs resident on my MacBook Pro it's the first time I have ever heard the fans on my computer ever turn on in two years I've never heard my fans turn on until I use this and this is GPU hungry if you don't have a graphic card that's decent don't even I wouldn't even use this but uh, this gets you some very interesting results. Here's the same prompt here. I said no watermark, no nudity. I don't know why I'd see a nude Santa. I just didn't want to take the chance. But these image images look uh, really good too. And this is based on the SD XBase 1, which is the SD XL is the newest uh, checkpoint that gives you some really interesting results. So what I can do here, if I like this, I can send this image over here and I can now change this to Refiner. And what Refiner does is it takes it to the next level. It's uh, very important that once we, you see this is still changing and we're leaving this at 1024, that is the default resolution for this. It's important that now we mess with our denoising because this, is French for augmenting the image. So if we put it a very low setting, like one point, let's just put it at one point, and now 0 0.2, because uh, we don't want it to change too much. We want to bring out some detail. So once this is completed up here, that's on Refiner, all the prompts stay the same. We click Generate, Generate. Here is this will start cooking, and you're going to see here, this is the first time I've ran this while having something like Camtasia open and, and these other windows. So let's see what it does. This probably won't be too bad. Okay, good. That was quick. So let's see what the difference is between this and this. It's not, oh. Well. See, again, I think we have to be careful here. I think that still it put glasses on them. And I'm not so sure I'm down with that. So things you could do, we could take this and take that denoising and go way back to like 0.1. We could also use a different sampling method, maybe the LMS Kara. And let's see what result we get from this. There are so many choices here. 
and you have to spend time to figure out what results are. There's also a whole world of creating prompts. And there's even companies now that sell prompts to get you the best. And there's a hierarchy in which you would ask the prompt. This is not really the best way to put in a prompt. It's a, there's, a, there's a specific hierarchy of the scene, uh, the action, details, uh, type of film look you're looking for, type of artist rendition, you're looking for something more like Van Gogh. You have to put all this information in. So let's see how this one did. Oh, that's better. That one looks okay. Not bad, not bad. Okay. If that's not enough, there's video. And the forum is another component you can add to Stable Diffusion. And with uh, keyframes defined, prompts, uh, you can create videos. And this is sort of the next area that I'll be spending some time in checking out. Uh, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. And uh, for me, what I've been doing is uh, looking at ChatGPT to help write some scripts and prompts based on what I'm looking for uh, from the research I've done. And it's given me some pretty interesting results. I'm at that point where I'm ready to throw a lot of video content from here into the sequences. No, this is more for 2024. Uh, but I will spend the remainder of this year uh, learning everything I can about stable diffusion, prompts, scripts, uh, the storyboards. Uh, and then I'll use things like uh, clip drop for some imagery and be testing that out. And of course, with mid journey, checking that out and see which ones I like best. That's a lot of information. And if you stuck with me this far, you're a, a trooper. Uh, for many of you that don't sequence, uh, this may not be of great importance, but for those of you that do, and certainly you vendors, yeah, you're gonna have to sharpen the saw and uh, immerse yourself in this world. Uh, and it's gonna cost you dearly in time. <laughs> So be prepared. I wish you the best of luck. And for all of you enthusiasts, I hope you found value in this. Please click that thumbs up if you liked it. I know it was a long tutorial. I apologize. It's hard to get through so much content uh, in a short amount of time. And consider subscribing to the channel. That's all I've got for you. I'm Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. We'll see you.